Hey everybody, it's Sugar Conroy. Welcome back to more Let's Play Super Luigi Galaxy. In the last episode, we def eh, we beat both Honey Hive Galaxy and Loop De Swoop Galaxy as far as we could actually defeat them at this part of the game. In this episode, we're gonna be get well, we already discovered the new galaxy. We just needed to actually see what it is. We're gonna be taking on Flip Switch Galaxy, and then hopefully the next level of the game. So we'll hopefully knock out two levels in this video too. All right. So, we gotta paint the planet. Peeing on it? No, by flipping switches, of course. That's how you make things yellow, of course. In the world of Mario. Or, Luigi, excuse me. Who is this Mario that you speak of? I love all the brick blocks. Uh, all the love for the question mark blocks, no love for the brick blocks. Some brick blocks are always a surprise. You never know what the heck you're gonna get. You just get it. Whereas question mark blocks, it's like, oh, I'm always going to get something good. Where's the fun in that? I don't even know what I'm talking about now. Not like I ever knew what I ever was talking about at any point in my life, especially not during my Let's Playing videos, but okay. Either way, let's do that, do that, do that. That jerk right there is not killable, but he becomes important later in the level, so... Yeah, this is hardly a level. This is more like one of those extra live mini games or Starbit mini games that I've shown you many times. And the mission lied. We didn't paint the planet yellow at all. We painted it green. Yeah, okay. Fine, sure. Just bounce off his head and then star. We got it. Okay, last level of this dome. As you can see, all galaxies are completed as far as they can be completed at this part of the game. This is the last level of the Terrace. Bowser Jr.'s Robot Reactor. Let's do it. First battle against Bowser Jr. in the game, even though it's technically not against him, but against something else anyway. Mega Legs Moon. Uh, real quick, you might notice the video looks a bit different in the way that things are positioned on the screen. That's because um, before this, well, episodes three and four at least, I had my Wii, uh, my Wii settings got reset for some reason, and I had it outputting in four by three and stretching to sixteen by nine. Now I have it actually arranging the game in sixteen by nine though, so now it actually looks the way that it should, and it doesn't look, you know, kind of. Well, I, I'm not gonna say it looked bad before though, but it, it certainly looked a bit off from how it should have looked though. If, if things, you know, look a different size now compared to the first, last, past two videos, that's why. So for sake of consistency, I'm gonna try to keep it being 16 by nine, and it hit me when I was inside the launch star. That can't be legal. It can't be. Five star bits, five star bits. Okay. And we got Bowser Jr. here. He does not have a voice actor anymore. Wahaha, <laughs> you made it, but I won't need my dad's help to take care of you. Go down, Mega Leg. Stump him with the power of your grand star. There we go. Now this thing has evil readings that are off the charts. He stares into your soul. Power of not nine LEDs. Okay. Going up here. We got some bullet bills here. It's not any big deal. Just go between them and they just run into run another. Not like. Honestly, if you can't get up here and. I swear that was not on purpose. I realized how good the song was. Okay, so we got over that in two long jumps. What we gotta do is lure over a bullet bill, which is not hard at all. Hit him into the cage and. Oh my god, your weak point is revealed! Oh no, the Mario villain actually thought ahead for once! Okay, yes, you have to get in front of a bullet bill here. You gotta get their attention. Not make them run into one another. And you wanna go ahead and jump. Okay, didn't quite do it right. What you're supposed to do is, you wanna jump over that fence, get the bullet bill to follow you over the fence, so that you can make it run into the weak point without having to destroy the fence. But unfortunately, I'm not doing a very good job of it, but just know that you can do that. You do it without destroying any segments of the fence with the bullet bills. So you can do this rather fast, but I guess either way we took him out rather quickly. And there we go! And with only five minutes on the clock, geez, this video's going fast. Two levels completed in five minutes. I mean, I know that it's single missions though, but okay. And, wow, bad voice. Okay! Okay, here we go. 
You got a grand star! You would not believe how many people have requested me to do that since beginning this LP. And honestly, it feels good to reference back to the Paper Mario of the Thousand Year Door days. And here we go. We're going to see the power of a grand star that is not the first one. And it's pretty much the same power as the one that is the first one. Doing that makes the star hotter. I like how it's uh, kind of like, you know, red being the coolest, and then it goes all the way up to, you know, obviously, well, technically violet would be the hottest, though, but it goes up to, like, light blue. So. You get what they're doing, you know, making it so the star's hotter, though, because red stars are actually the coldest. Uh, alright, galaxy completed. And we've discovered a new galaxy, but we're not going to go there quite yet. We're going to go ahead and do that hungry Luma, like I said we were going to. Yeah, that ball flame is our beacon. It no longer looks like bacon, unfortunately, because they had to change the color. Common observer is the power to fly through the universe. Once all the powers are stored, we'll be able to even fly to the center of the universe. We're going across the universe for our love. Just as Jude did. All right, the power is on in a new dome. Again, yeah, he's like, yeah, up there, you can go to the dome. There's the fountain, okay. Forget the location of a dome. How could you forget... Would it be really sad if he said that on Starship Mario in the second game, saying, if you ever get lost on Starship Mario, come find me. Uh, that'd be really sad, but anyway. Uh, here is that Hungry Luma. Like I said, you want to turn in your total star between the levels. This is the uh, purpose that these guys serve. This guy needs 400, and what do you know? We have just enough. So that's it, I'm stuff, and he's going to kill himself. So now we are up to how many creatures killing themselves for the sole purpose of us just getting a bunch of shiny golden stars? I mean, geez, if you want shiny gold stars for your reward as rewards for your troubles, go to kindergarten, not making things commit suicide. Okay, so, sweet, sweet galaxy. Rocky Road. Let's get the show on the road. And if you've not played this game before and you're a classic Mario fan, you are going to freak out when you hear the music of this level. Surprised if you haven't played this game and don't know the song, though, but okay, here we go. Now, my humming probably sounds absolutely nothing like the song in the background, and I've probably just ruined the moment because I am very tone deaf and have bad hearing in general. So, simply put, let's just long jump. Uh, this level can be a bit of a nuisance. I'm not saying it's hard, I'm just saying that it can be really time consuming because of how much the level is moving. And how, like, there's very little solid ground in this level that isn't, like, full of holes or moving. And look at that, a conveniently placed arrow right after we already figured out where to go. I can't see farther. Don't stop there, the star's right around the corner. Now, the first time that I played this game, I don't know why, but even though I was clearly long jumping and doing what I'm doing now, this area just kept looping. And, like, I couldn't get it to stop. Like, I was literally on this area. Hey, that arrow's pointing me to the wall. The wall must be a secret. No, it isn't. Um, but yeah, I have no idea what was happening. This area just kept looping, and I was in it for like 10 minutes. I have no idea why. I've never had that happen in any later playthrough. If you've had that happen, let me know. Or if there's some way to make it do that, also let me know, because I'm curious. I have never been able to recreate that. And I swear, I'm not going crazy. As much as you guys think that I went crazy a long time ago. Um, something that a lot of people don't know. This right here, these eight things in position, these gumdrops. Yep, it's an eight star bit thing. Some people don't know that for some reason. Hey, we're going back. Indeed, we are going back with a stone. And with that, we have discovered yet another new galaxy, also in the fountain. Now that we have the terrace completed, along with the hungry luma that goes with it, uh, we're going to head off to the next dome, which is the fountain. Um, got about, uh, about ten minutes, yeah. Um, something you should know is that after you defeat, uh, oh, defeat eight, well, if you just unlock a Hungry Loom level, you have these little pink guys replace them on the hub world. And they're like, delicious. So, yes, basically, I like to imagine that is their ghost, though, because they look like wispier and they're pink, you know, so I, I always like that. I always like to imagine that is their ghost, so. Their ghost will be like, to haunt you, I will let you replay the level. It's just like the boxes in Paper Mario 1000 Grow that curse you with stuff that actually helps you. Uh, anyway, though, this is the fountain going into the observatory dome. This is the first new level here. We can actually open two of them, though, but we're just going to open this one because it's the first one. That level is the Space Junk Galaxy, which we're going to be taking on in the next episode. All right, though, so next time on Super Luigi Galaxy, we're going to be taking on the first one, two, or possibly all three missions or 
of Space Junk Galaxy. See you guys next time.